What's up, everybody? And today we are reacting to North Korea versus the United States 2021 military slash army comparison. This is by the Infograph Show. I'm excited to look at this one um, because I feel like, if I'm honest with you, I feel like the US would just dominate North Korea. Um, but we're going to find out. We're going to find out. And for those of you who don't know, I am incredibly sick. Um, I was sick in the last bit. I've been sick now for about three or four days. Um, I got my results back from my Rona test. I don't have it, which is nice. Um, but I uh, I feel like I've been hit by a bus, which absolutely sucks. But it is what it is. Also, before we get started, don't forget new huge announcement original adventures me and my wife my family are converting a old school bus and we're going to be traveling the us and we're vlogging every second of it so if you want to go and check that out the first two vlogs are up next one will be up on monday original adventures link down below to the youtube channel and the instagram but for now let's shut up let's watch north korea versus the united states 2021 military slash army comparison the infographic show down on the 38th parallel the hermit kingdom of north korea versus the united states of america kim jong-un versus go. well we're not really sure who because this script was written before the presidential election it's the american <laughs> bald eagle versus the north korean um trash pigeon that doesn't really seem like north korea has an official national animal it's a showdown <laughs> the world's been expecting for decades but how do these two antagonist powers stack up who really has the advantage in a showdown on the Korean mm. Peninsula? For this scenario, let's compare the two countries alone and without the help of allies to see how they really measure up against each other. Okay, before we get started, I'm going to give my predictions. Um, I feel like the US would just dominate. They have more personnel. They have more um, vehicles. They have more missiles. They have better technology. I think what the infographic show just said then where they're taking away um, people who would help out is a big thing because North Korea have allies with like Russia. So it would be a little bit different than this, but let's see what they say. Overall, the United States is ranked as the world's number one military power and currently the only global superpower. It's a common mistake to call Russia or China superpowers, but the definition of a superpower is a state that can exert economic, cultural, and military influence worldwide. Currently, right. the US is the only nation with the military fleets and cultural and economic clout to do so. North Korea is no slouch, though, in the military department, and despite being a financially destitute hermit kingdom, it's managed to field a military that places it at the number 25 spot in global rankings. This is because most of the official budget of the North Korean government goes to its military, and the military also receives hundreds of millions in covert financing, typically the result of state-sponsored criminal enterprises. In terms of, of manpower, the United States fields an active duty force of 1.4 million personnel versus North Korea's 1.28 million. The yeah. U.S. also fields a greater force of reservists, with 860,000 personnel versus North Korea's reserve force of 600,000. The U.S. Surprisingly, though, the North Korea has way more than I thought they did. Way more than I thought they did. Um, there's not that much of a difference there. I mean, obviously, there's you know quite a big difference, but there's not actually as much as I thought there would be. Actually, how many times did I say actually then? <laughs> but yeah, that's that's. Relatively surprising. The U.S. barely has the numbers advantage here, but in a grueling multi-year conflict, the U.S. Mm. has the population advantage, with yeah. 4.2 million reaching service age every year versus North Korea's measly 415,000. Yeah. If North Korea wants to win, clearly it has to secure victory as quickly as possible. Wars cost money, though, and it turns out it's an extremely expensive affair. The latest U.S. defense budget is about $750 billion versus North Korea's $1.6 billion. This, of course, is only the official government figure, and North right. Korea's real defense budget is easily hundreds of millions greater thanks to all that black market activity. Remember, yeah. kids, doing drugs may seem tubular, but you're just going to help North Korea go nuclear. Look at the budget difference there. Holy cow. The U.S. military budget is just through the roof that's ridiculous remember kids doing drugs may seem tubular but you're just gonna help north <laughs> korea go nuclear but let's check out all the toys that those big budgets buy 
In the air, the U.S. fields 13,264 aircraft versus North Korea's 949. Not only is this a massive numbers disparity, but a huge disparity in capabilities as mm -hmm. well. The U.S. currently relies on the F-15 Eagle and the F-18 Super Hornet as its primary air defense and air attack platforms. These two aircraft are fourth-generation models, but have received serious upgrades to their capabilities, which boost them into a fourth-and-a-half-generation capability. Complementing the U.S. fighter forces are 187 F-22s, the world's yeah. only fully operational fifth-generation fighter, and officially the world's deadliest fighter aircraft. As more and more F-35s come online, however, and achieve initial operational capability status, the entire U.S. fighter fleet is poised to become fully fifth-generation. That's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Just think about how much power the U.S. military has. That's amazing. A significant battlefield advantage against any foe. North Korean air forces are decades behind the U.S. in capability. Its most numerous fighter aircraft, the Chengdu J-7, was developed in the 1960s and exported by China. Its most capable aircraft, the MiG-29, was deployed in the 70s as a counter to the American F-15. However, North Korea's MiG-29s number at only 35 and it's believed that they lack anything resembling modern avionics. To make matters worse, North Korea's entire inventory of air-to-air -air missiles heralds back to the Cold War, and the nation possesses less than 500 of them. Yeah. An air battle between the U.S. and North Korea would be hopeless for the Hermit Kingdom, which is why its pilots are trained in kamikaze tactics. If of war course. were to break out, North Korea's air force would launch one-way <laughs> attacks across the DMZ, knowing its air force could never survive an air war. In the mountainous terrain of North Korea, perhaps no aircraft is more important, however, than the attack helicopter, capable of taking out armored forces and providing recon and fire support in places regular aircraft would find it difficult to operate. Attack yeah. helicopters would be of paramount importance in a showdown between the two countries. The U.S. fields an inventory of 967 Apache helicopters, one of the deadliest attack wow. helos ever built. Not only is each Apache equipped with state-of-the-art electronics and sensors, but these agile birds are extremely tough to boot. When an entire flight of Apaches was ambushed in a protracted battle against insurgents on the ground in Afghanistan, the U.S. famously only lost a single bird while decimating ground forces below them. North Korea's 20 attack helos are Soviet-built MiG-24 Hinds, an extremely capable attack helicopter that, despite being dated, still packs an impressive punch. Good thing for the U.S. ground forces that North Korea only operates a small amount of these powerful Russian birds of prey. On the ground, North Korea is almost neck and neck with the U.S. And so, in the air, the U.S. would dominate. And I feel like it doesn't even matter about these ground tanks. Like, it doesn't even matter... Because if the U.S. is dominating the airspace, it's, it just doesn't matter. Because these tanks can be obliterated by some of these um, aircraft. So I feel like this doesn't really matter. In terms of armored forces, with 6,045 combat tanks versus the U.S.'s 6,289, a lot the of tanks. two tank armies are almost evenly matched in terms of numbers. In terms of quality, though... Well, North Korea once more suffers, greatly. Yeah. North Korea's most formidable tank is a native upgrade to the Soviet T-62, known as Chon Mahol, with the T-62 being North Korea's most numerous, nearly modern design. Large numbers of them were upgraded with new armor, fire, and sighting systems, and other sensors. In effect, these might be upgraded designs, but the core model is still the 1960s-era T-62. Yeah. It's known that North Korea operates at least a 1,000 of these tanks, but may have upwards of 1,200. Mm -hmm. North Korea's second most prolific tank is the T-54 and T-55, of which it operates 2,000. I think it goes without saying the U.S. would absolutely dominate. Let's be honest. The U.S. is nothing. It's just a speck of dust compared to the U.S. These dated, underpowered tanks were terrifying when first fielded by the Soviet Union in the 50s. But as a wreck found 50s. out in the first Gulf War, present absolutely zero threat to the U.S. modern Abrams. On the ground, North Korea's tank forces simply could not hope to do more than delay an American armored advance. Yep. One area where North Korea rises above the U.S., though, is in the size of its rocket artillery forces, fielding 2,110 versus Damn. the U.S.'s 1,366. Rocket artillery may not have the endurance of fire of traditional artillery, but provides one extremely crucial advantage over regular artillery. By firing all of its munitions in extremely rapid succession, rocket artillery puts all of its steel on target within seconds, 
giving Damn. troops and vehicles little time to seek cover. While the US fields more modern versions of rocket projectors, the technology is so simple that even North Korea's Soviet-era technology poses a significant and deadly threat to US forces. Okay, so that's that's pretty surprising, but again, I don't think it really makes a difference. Like, if you dominate the airspace, you've pretty much won, let's be honest. Think about the Battle of Britain, right? World War II, if you dominate the airspace, the, the, they're just not advancing because if you haven't got the air, you can't get the ground. It's as simple as that. And I think, um, I don't know whether it'll go into drones and stuff like that, but yeah. Because all it takes is like, think about it, right? So tanks have to have to move across terrain, but if if you've got aircraft, right, you can cut off things. Like you can cut off supplies to them because they can go and take out ships. They can go and take out different routes to to for trade and stuff like there's a there's a lot there's so many more variables that an aircraft can take out than tanks uh, or at least their missiles you know or at least I'm, I'm i'm confident there is let me know in the comments what you think on the seas, the U.S. fields a fleet of 490 ships versus North Korea's 984. North Korea may seem to have an advantage in numbers, but that's because the vast majority of its ships are small torpedo boats yeah. that can't operate far from shore. The second largest element of North Korea's navy is its <coughs> underwater forces, with one of the world's largest submarine forces numbering anywhere between 60 and 80. 40 of these subs are the medium-sized diesel-electric Sango class, built in the late 90s. While not particularly advanced versus the U.S. Navy's Los Angeles and Virginia-class nuclear submarines, diesel-electric submarines used in a defensive posture close to the shore can be an incredibly effective force, even if technologically outclassed. By loitering near the shore and running silently on battery power, North Korea could simply choose to have these subs lie in wait for yeah. oncoming U.S. ships and launch deadly ambushes. The nation's willingness to operate these craft in a kamikaze style similar to its air force only adds to the deadliness of North Korea's submarine force. By comparison, the U.S. operates 66 submarines, most of which are Los Angeles-class attack submarines. These are in the process of being phased out by the new Virginia class, which incorporates many of the Sea Wolf class technologies at a lower cost and thus with less effectiveness than the deadly Sea Wolf, which is sadly far too expensive to field in large numbers. So I get it. I get it. But I feel like there's one thing that they're not putting into context here, and that's uh, military tactics. I feel like the US is constantly innovating. Uh, with military tactics and speaking to other countries so i know that when i was in the royal marines a lot of u.s marines would come over to wars and a lot of us would go over to the u.s and um we trade tactics we trade tactics and even though that sounds strange trading tactics between countries it only boosts everyone up like all your allies you know like so the big thing that that we used to trade was cqb like room clearing so different techniques of room cleaning. We would find what really works for us. We'd go over to the US. We'd show them what we're doing. They'd show them us what they're doing. We'd train in each other's different techniques. And we'd learn from it. We'd pick what we think works. What we don't think works. And it boosts you up. The US military tactics are some of the best in the world. Their tactics are phenomenal. Like phenomenal. So where who's helping North Korea with their military tactics? Russia maybe? maybe a few other countries but is that anywhere close to the advancements that the us have made in tactics i don't think so i don't think so i think um we just we ha the technology is so advanced that we can go through lots of different scenarios and work out the best situation and they can't do that they have to just go by the book of what they have probably been either been taught by other countries like russia or just from trial and error so i feel like one thing that's not in in um conspiracy comparison here which is important is tactics three of the legendary sea wolf class submarines remain in service with the navy with no near-term plans to retire them though the navy is planning on acquiring a new modern variant of the sea wolf <clears throat> to use on extremely important or sensitive missions with 20 aircraft carriers which include smaller carriers meant to support amphibious operations Damn. the u.s is guaranteed to have air power anywhere in the world it needs it yeah. by comparison north korea has zero aircraft carriers yeah. and could not hope to ever operate one in its current economic climate let alone ensure it survives first contact against u.s forces despite all these naval advantages to the u.s though north korea once more has the advantage in one area 
mine warfare. With 23 vessels especially equipped to mine sea lanes versus the US's 11, North Korea is poised to make an amphibious attack against it by the superior US fleet, a costly affair in terms of manpower and equipment. Clearing Jeez. sea mines is an extremely time-consuming and dangerous affair, and with so many mine-laying ships, North Korea could make entire beaches and ports completely inaccessible to US forces. I'm a, I'm a, I hate, I hate uh, mines in any kind. But sea mines are some of the worst because there's still mines out there from previous wars that we just haven't found because they don't track where they put them. They just put them down. And that's bad. Bad for future generations when the war's over. Bad for the environment. Bad for commercial use. Stupid. I hate it so much. The military advantage is clearly in favor of the U.S., yep. but a showdown between the two countries is far more nuanced than merely comparing numbers. <clears throat> the U.S. must maintain global commitments even during a war, meaning that it wouldn't be able to commit more than 30 to 40 percent of its total force to a conflict with yeah. North Korea. That brings the number parity way down on the U.S. side, though the U.S.'s far superior equipment and training, or force multipliers, yeah. practically ensure a U.S. victory. Yeah. However, it would be an extremely costly victory for the U.S. and its allies as North Korea is well prepared to make a push north from South Korea an exceedingly bloody affair. With its mine laying capabilities, the North Korean Navy could make the ocean around the Korean Peninsula inaccessible for weeks, disrupting not just military operations, but civilian traffic as well, yeah. and shutting down one of the busiest trade arteries in the world. Then there's North Korea's nuclear program the full extent of which is still not known. What is clear is that North Korea has the materials and technology for several bombs. Yeah. Some estimates place the current North Korean stockpile at 30 to 40 weapons. Even though most of these weapons could not reach the US mainland, they would make any conflict on the peninsula an extremely dangerous affair, yeah. with a losing Kim Jong-un likely to decide to use nuclear weapons against US <laughs> forces and South Korea, rather than be deposed as so many dictators before him. Now go check out weird things that only exist in North Korea, or this other video instead. So I'll leave a link down below for the OG video, definitely go check that out, but I, there's, there's many different things that I don't think they talk about here. I, obviously nuclear power is a big one, but Drones, drones are a big one now. Like the US has so many drones that um I think um as long as the US has the money, it can just keep throwing them at North Korea, right? You don't have to lose any personnel at that point. So the and, and again, the big thing that no one talks about here is tactics. The military tactics of the US is just it's 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 at a true professional level. Do you get what I'm saying? um very much on par with the uk and everybody knows the british british soldiers are some of the best soldiers in the world right and we've been all like i know i i never went over to the us to, to train over there but like i know friends who went to the us and were like holy cow these guys know what they're doing now that i'm in the us i get the most of both worlds. i get the best of both worlds guys <laughs> but um yeah the the us tactics are shockingly good and i feel like for the most part, and I don't mean just tactics on the ground like room clearing, I'm talking like officers who know exactly, like look at the landscape and know exactly what to do. Like the training's just brilliant. So I feel like North Korea may have uh, a good advantage on holding their country. So like if you wanted to like take over North Korea, they'd be very good at standing their ground. But other than that, and I don't even think that would last either to be honest with you. So yeah, that's what my thoughts are on uh, North Korea versus the US. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, good video. Really enjoyed it. I'll leave a link down below to the OG video. I, I think it was a um, fun video. If you think I should react to more videos like this, let me know in the comments. Uh, but for now, members, you're amazing. I love you. I couldn't do this without you. I honestly couldn't make videos every single day if it wasn't for these members right here. So thank you for supporting the channel as much as you do. I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. Um, links down below to original adventures me and my wife are converting a school bus and traveling the united states and vlogging the whole thing so if you want to check that out original adventure down below youtube channel and instagram it's going to be a ton of fun um also a link down below to all my socials including the two links to discord we've got the military link for all things military if you want to get fit for the military military join the military join that discord and also the geek link if you want to talk scp D, &D halo metro star wars warhammer the whole shebang go over to the geek discord um 
Also, a link down below to my podcast and my Twitch stream, where I stream every Tuesdays and Thursdays. And a link down below to my second channel, Original Human Geek, where we upload D&D and some other fun stuff. Other than that, guys, it's been a ton of fun. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.